everything was right for me. I'm sure I'm not one making my team lose. Everyone is mad at me all the time. I don't know even, I don't even know why I am there. You, if they try to be nice to her, she would just get mad and raise her, raise her voice. No wonder they were bought and grow when they saw her. Grumpy Glennon is what the school kids call her. No one really dislikes her. She was just pouncy and hard to be around. Sometimes even the neighborhood pets were scared of her. One day, everything is different. What can I do? What can I do for you, Sailor Two? Can I help you with your homework? So I, can I help you with your chores so we can play? Do you need help on, with your homework? What happened to you, Gwendolyn? Did you <coughs> win a contest or something? By the way, that was a joke too, so you are different. I wanted to tell you that I received the Lord Jesus into my life. I know, I know you have been praying for me, he has made a great change in me. I'm so sorry for the way I treated you. I hope you forgive me. Oh yes, I will. I forgive you. I'm so happy that you have the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus to help you here. Yeah. Proverbs 16, 32. He that is slow in his anger is better than the mighty man. He that rules his spirit, then he taketh stand. Two plus two is four. 
Johnny took my candy bar, Susie will not share. Pity me, cause life just isn't fair. Oh. everyone if you will stand please take your hymn book and let's sing page number 450 450 the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross and heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God... <clears throat> On the last verse. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, name God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. Well, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for a good uh, day, and we thank you for the opportunity to come to church this evening. We thank you for the children who have just come tonight and shared songs and uh, scripture, and Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity to minister to them and reach them with the gospel and the love of Christ, and thank you for those who are ministering to them and uh, those that have gone and picked many of them up and brought them in, and we pray for them and their families that, Lord, we can, we can reach them and that, Lord, they can know the blessing of having a relationship with you and having you 
in the midst of their hearts and homes. And we just thank you for the families here this evening. Uh, meet needs in their lives and bless them. And Lord, we pray that uh, God will just have a heart to hear from you and a, a heart that desires to live for you and to serve you. And uh, Lord, we pray for others tonight who aren't able to come or sick and many other things, Lord, that uh, have kept them here. We just pray for them that they'll be able to get back out and be here as soon as they can. And we just ask you to minister to us tonight as we open our hearts to what you have to say for us this evening through your word and through, uh, Lord, the uh, fellowship of these others here this evening. We just thank you for this time and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated and it is a blessing to see you and it's a blessing to be here and be seen. And so we're thankful for God's goodness to us and appreciate folks uh, praying and uh, Lord uh, healed us up and got us back up and out and on the go and and uh, we're just praying for many others that are suffering and sick and so many things. And I hope you'll just make that sincere prayer that uh, the Lord just protects our families and people and uh, helps them to stay uh, healthy and able to get out and come and be in church and all these many things. But we are blessed that you're here. Thank you for coming out and being a part of our Wednesday night services. We uh, are thankful Brother Lane was able to come and we appreciate him as a faithful missionary and uh, we just pray you'll just remember him in prayer and just be a blessing to him. And uh, we want to just encourage him and lift him up to the Lord. And, and uh, we're just uh, thankful for, uh, for good, faithful missionaries like they are. And uh, we're blessed by that. And uh, we're thankful we can have a part in their ministry. I think everybody has a bulletin, and I hope you uh, take it and just take a look at it. And, of course, we've got a place there where we're praying for our servicemen that are actively serving in the military uh, out of our church families and we're praying for our missionaries and we have uh, four of our missionaries in here tonight we hope you're praying for them and remembering them uh, in their various places of ministry that the Lord will just uh, use them that God will just uh, have his hand upon them uh, that local churches will uh, continue to have burden hearts and be faithful to give to support them and meet their needs so that they can reach souls uh, in, the, in the harvest fields. I'm thankful that Paul wrote to the church and said to the church that uh, every soul a missionary reaches is fruit that's added to our account. So we have a part uh, in their ministry. And so we want to uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer, pray for them, and remember these missionaries that we have in prayer. Some of our uh, folks doing missionary work right here at home are our bus workers. And so remember our bus workers Pray that we'll have uh, hearts that uh, will be touched to get involved in the bus ministry. This is a great need, and we don't want to uh, ever step back. We want to move forward even further into the mission fields that we have all around us. There are so many others that we can reach. Uh, there's such a uh, revolving door of people in our community. Many people move the first of every month, and we lose people, and new people come, and Without enough people to reach them, we can, uh, they can come and go, and we never are able to even make contact with them. So pray for our bus routes and bus workers that folks will get involved, and God will use their lives to make a difference in the lives of others. And so pray for the bus workers we have on our list here tonight. Appreciate our nursery workers as well, everybody doing something to help in the service of the Lord. And uh, we do have a, a long list of folks as we're here the last Wednesday night of the month of February. Uh, we've got a long list of folks on our prayer list, people that we've added all throughout the month, and we're praying for them. And so just remember them uh, in prayer and uh, be praying for, of course, Dr. Geiler and the school. And I talked to him this morning, and he is ready to come. Uh, he'll be here Sunday night and uh, preach for 6 o'clock on Sunday night. And then he's bringing the choir back Monday night. They'll be here 7 o'clock church, and he'll have the choir here. They're going to sing, and he'll preach. And uh, he, he wants to come back Tuesday, and uh, I, I pray that he can. But I told him, you just see how you feel, and uh, we'll go as long as you want to. Uh, but, uh, but we want him uh, to come, and he's looking forward to being here. So pray for him. Pray for the school. And, of course, we mentioned they had been flooded and displaced up there. And uh, one thing that was a blessing in the flood was that uh, the gas company, whenever the water gets up there, 
in that area, they come, the gas company comes and shuts off the gas because a lot of, a lot of the buildings and places that are gas fed have water in them. And so uh, they shut that off. And one thing they noticed was that when they came to the school, there were some obvious gas leaks in the school property, uh, in some of the buildings. And uh, so once the water went back down, they did find that there had been some, uh, some present leaks before the flood in the kitchen, dining room, in that area, and they didn't know about it. And that could have been a very dangerous thing. And they maybe, not ha maybe had not found those unless that flood had happened. So what happened is now they're having to replace all the gas line from the meter uh, all the way down the property and into the buildings. So again, another expense, another uh, task. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the original gas lines, uh, like probably many places, are under their paved parking lot. And uh, so they decided we're just going to go and reroute it out in the yard and bring it around and bring it into the buildings. And, uh, and so he, Dr. Geiler said, he said, I told the boys, he said, boys, you're going to dig that ditch. You're going to dig a ditch, you know, and they've got 50 or 60 boys. It wouldn't take them long to do it. But, but he said, uh, a man in the church, uh, I can see someone like Lowell or somebody like that has a small tractor and a backhoe, and he came and he dug that, he's dug the ditch for him. So we're about two thirds of the way done with the project. He said, you couldn't have found a happier bunch of boys <laughs> when they saw that guy show up. And I, I know that feeling very well. I've, I've seen Lowell driving up the parking lot with that backhoe or his tractor. And, and so I know that that's a, that's a happy feeling, uh, but they're just about finished with that project. Of course, they still aren't able to be all the way back in and move back into the facilities and things, but, but they're, they'll be ready to get out of there and out of that mess and get here. And, and uh, we, of course, want to give them a good meal and uh, provide that for them. And uh, we do that every year, and they're going to be in on Monday at 5 o'clock, and so we, uh, we want to take care of them, and we, uh, we always can use your help uh, with the food items, and we have a menu here, and we'll pass this list around today. We'll pass it around again Sunday and let folks volunteer to bring in some of the dishes we know they like, and uh, you can help uh, by doing that, uh, or you can help by giving a monetary donation, and we'll purchase the chicken and things like that with that. Uh, and uh, you can just mark that in an envelope, put it for the choir meal or dinner for the school or whatever you'd like to do. Uh, and then we always can use help beginning about 1 o'clock or so on Monday, just getting things prepared, ready, and serving the school when they get here. And that's just a great honor to be able to do that. So, so we're going to pass that list around. We also have one for uh, our snacks on Wednesday nights and Many of you are so faithful and such a blessing to give and bring in snacks for, the, for these children as well as the teenagers on, uh, on Wednesday night, and that means a lot to them. And uh, so we're going to give you that opportunity to do that uh, here uh, on, our, uh, on our sheets, and uh, we'll pass both of these lists around. And if you'd like to help out with that, uh, you can. And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. John, would you care to just get to that? children but uh, but pray for the school and pray for dr guiler and uh, that would be a blessing and uh, just an update on josh moore uh, he got another good report from the doctors that uh, uh, he's gained 10 pounds since the surgery that he had this final surgery and so the the doctors are saying that that's a sign that his body is absorbing what it needs to naturally through the process of eating and digesting and all those kind of things so they're back in his uh, TPN uh, dosage way down and going to start backing him off of that completely and that'll be one of the final things that that happens is they'll take him completely off that uh, bag type nutrition and uh, so that was a good thing and so we're blessed and thankful for that and I appreciate some men in the church who went by and built them a ramp up into the house so that makes it easy for him to get up and get in there with the wheelchair and uh, those kind of things and uh, no one uh, had a wheelchair but I uh, did have someone who whose uh, whose loved one had had a little powered scooter 
and uh, they uh, they gave that to Josh and uh, and uh, just told him if you want to use it use it if you don't want to use it you can sell it and use that money to purchase a wheelchair or whatever you feel like you want to do so that that was a help too and that worked out uh, that way so uh, so thankful for that and the Lord answering prayer but we do have so many people here uh, that we want to pray for and we want to pray for folks that are sick and under the weather and uh, just uh, seemingly it's just an onslaught isn't it of illnesses and sicknesses and uh, young children and adults and everybody at, at every age uh, are susceptible to these things and so we're we're praying uh, for folks and uh, praying we'll just uh, get clear of all these things and everybody everybody will be good and healthy but uh, you may have something that you'd like to add to our prayer list tonight or just uh, an update on something then uh, We'll, uh, we'll take note of that. Any, anybody have something this evening you want to add to our prayer list or, or, or put on here tonight? Yeah, Phoebe's had an ear infection and not, not, not been real good either, so pray for her. Anyone else tonight have something? Well, I hope you'll pray for uh, the meeting beginning Sunday night, and I hope you'll invite someone to come, and I hope you'll be here and, and don't miss the opportunity to hear great preaching and sit under uh, Dr. Geiler's ministry and then of course to be back out on Monday and hear the choir and uh, you'll you'll not uh, you'll not uh, you'll not regret you did and if you've never heard the Marietta Bible College if you never heard them you ought to come and hear them uh, and there'll be a hundred of them plus and they'll fill up all the way down on the floor all the way up through the uh, through our choir loft and uh, they'll do a tremendous job singing uh, songs that honor the Lord. Uh, all the students, most all of them, are from foreign countries and third world countries, and, and uh, they, they, they believe what they're singing about. They believe the change the Lord made in their life and, and that he can make that change in other people's lives if they'll open their heart to him, and you, you'll be blessed. It, it'll, be, it'll make a lifelong impact on your life, and I hope you'll come. Children love to hear the choir. And I promise you, you have small children, you bring them out, you bring them in the service. Uh, when that choir starts, they'll, they'll, they'll sit right there and they'll listen and uh, they'll watch. And it, it'll, be a, it'll be a great uh, thing for your family. Uh, so, so all those things are happening beginning on Sunday night. Uh, and so be praying for that. I hope you'll sincerely pray for our, uh, our basketball ministry. Uh, we're... We've got lots of people this year. We've got lots of folks that are coming out and listening. Uh, but I hope you'll pray with us. Uh, I, pray, I hope you'll pray that God will give us men uh, the wisdom and lead us to preach or to take that short period of time and to give them truth that will make a difference in their life. And uh, we're living in a difficult, difficult day. And I tell you, people can hear, hear the gospel they can hear uh, the truth and it seems like it has such little impact in their life and uh, I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will just uh, will just uh, will do the work that God can do uh, God promises his word uh, can pierce even into the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and as a discerner of these things and we're praying the Spirit of God will do a work in uh, hearts and lives as we uh, as we try to share God's word with them in just a short short time uh, during each of the games on Saturdays and uh, we appreciate folks who are faithful to come out and help us with that and uh, we know your labor's not in vain uh, in the Lord uh, anybody else have something on there tonight you want to put on there well, we want to pray for these folks, and uh, we want to remember them in prayer, and uh, we've got a lot of things going on. Easter's coming up. We'll, 
uh, start preaching along those lines Sunday. The Lord's given us direction on some other messages and some things that He would have us to, to preach and to, and, to, and to focus on as we move ahead into the year. But, uh, but we're looking forward to it. We're praying God will just, uh, just, uh, just settle upon our hearts, our church, our families, and we'll see God do a real work here, a real revival, resurrecting work in our lives and families as we move through this, uh, this time of the year. Uh, it'd be great if we could get uh, a couple of our men here uh, to come and help us out. Maybe John, Lowell, if you didn't care to come and help. And uh, we'll pray for these folks, and then we'll receive our tithes and offerings and worship the Lord in our giving tonight. Uh, we're praying we'll just continue to trust the Lord and be faithful in our mission giving. And uh, we've had good months here as we've moved into the year uh, here, 2018, and we want to see that. Uh, support stay up and we want to begin to support some new missionaries God could do a great work in that here this year and uh, so pray about these things and let's trust the Lord and be faithful and uh, our men will lead us in prayer here tonight This is February the 28th, the last day of the month. And so for you who, uh, who have signed up to receive the daily bread booklets, the new ones are out. They're on the table right back here in the, in the foyer. And uh, your name's right on the back. And the label there is printed, and they're laying right on the table. So be sure to pick them up and get them. And uh, I hope you read them. Uh, they're a tremendous blessing to me. I look forward to them. It's the last thing I read before I... Uh, go to sleep each night, and uh, I hope that you'll read uh, yours and, uh, and just uh, open your heart to the great truth that we find in each of these. Just a great thought, something that each of them helps us in our hearts and lives, and it's amazing how many times that I'll pick up uh, the booklet, turn to the day, uh, and read it, and it seems like God knew just what I had going on that day, and he gave me some help through his word and through a, a truth, a thought from God's word. Uh, so be sure to get them and pick them up, and uh, they're back there for you right after uh, the service is over. And right back there, while you're there, uh, right across the, uh, the floor is our uh, resource center for our Easter uh, materials, and there are invitations back there you can give. There are gospel tracts. Uh, there are flyers that uh, have all of the children's activities and events that are happening here on Easter Sunday on there. And on the back tells a little bit about the, uh, the production or the, the presentation the choir is going to give, uh, as well as the sermon and things we'll be preaching that morning. And there's also a gospel booklet entitled, We Love Him Because He First Loved Us. These are all great materials. I hope you'll take them and use them. And I uh, hope that rack just uh, is empty uh, after every service. And uh, we'll keep filling it up, and you can keep taking them out and uh, getting the word out. And 
it's time right now. We're almost just a month out, and uh, so it's time to begin uh, to pray and to prepare and to invite people out for, uh, for those services. Another exciting thing happening on Sunday morning is Sunday morning is the first day of our new Building with the Bible hour at 930. And uh, this is our new uh, format here for the Sunday school hour. And uh, we're going to be offering these sessions, four-week sessions, and uh, they'll begin Sunday morning. We have two this, uh, this month of March. We have one entitled, How God Can Use Me to Build a New Testament Church. And, uh, you know, in, in Peter, uh, Peter wrote about how uh, Christ is the foundation, but we are all lively stones, living stones, and he wants to take our lives and put us in our place in the local church and use us to build a work for his name. And uh, so, uh, so God uh, has given us some things in his word that if we'll give attention to them, if we'll be sure they're true about our lives, then God will use us as he builds a New Testament local church that can really make a difference in families and in a community. And so we've got four lessons uh, on that. Uh, that class will be meeting in the college classroom. So if you go down the hallway, uh, it's, uh, it's the, the, the section that will be on your left. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the big room we've opened up. It's been opened up, and it's where the college meets. And we'll be meeting there on Sunday mornings at 930, uh, building with the Bible hour. The other class is going to be in the ministry center, and it's called Overcoming Bitterness Through Biblical Forgiveness. And uh, there's going to be four lessons on, uh, on bitterness and, uh, and uh, how destructive it is. And uh, it's, not, it's not destructive necessarily for, uh, for, the, for the other person, but people who harbor bitterness, it's destructive in your life, and it can be destructive in the lives of the people that you love. It can, it can be destructive in what God wants to do with your life, uh, and, and God has given us uh, his word, and by his word, by his grace, we can, uh, we can overcome these things, and so there's going to be four great practical lessons on that. That'll be in the ministry center starting at 930 Sunday morning. And so we hope you'll be involved in each of these classes. And uh, if you haven't signed up or enrolled in one of those classes, then uh, you just show up. Be here 930 Sunday morning. If you have children, we have children's Sunday school classes for every age group. If you have an infant, we have an infant nursery. If you have a toddler, there's a toddler Sunday school class. Uh, there's Sunday school classes for kindergarten right all the way up uh, through elementary school, middle school, and uh, there's a class for every age uh, children and then for you, uh, for your family, find a place to get in on the Building with the Bible hour. And I can't encourage you enough if you're not currently coming out uh, to Sunday school, this is something new. It's a new approach, fresh way to look at biblical truth. And I hope you'll be involved in them. And uh, just a couple weeks, we've already uh, settled and we have direction on the next two that we'll be doing in April. We'll be getting that information out to you and you can be uh, thinking about what the Lord would have you to do and sign up for those that will be taking place in the month of April. But that'll be a great blessing for us. And then we mentioned uh, the college choir on Monday night and you can help us out with the meal and all these things and so uh, so many things going on here in the spring and uh, we just uh, are excited about each and every one of them and uh, we're looking forward to all that the Lord wants to do and will do as we are obedient to him uh, in the Lord but uh, we're blessed we're thankful you're here tonight uh, Wednesday nights are always the time we take just a little time as a family and just see if maybe someone has a, uh, has a testimony or maybe a, uh, an answer to prayer you'd like to just uh, share and give the Lord thanks for or just a praise uh, for uh, something he's done in your life. Maybe it's a verse of scripture you read in your devotions and you'd like to share it because it was encouraging to you. It'll probably be encouraging to someone else. Any, anybody tonight have something on your heart you'd like to take just a moment and share? Right. Barbara, whatever it is. 
Amen. Right. Amen. Anyways, and he's just like, I talk to Angie all the time, and she can, it takes me to a level about God, so I don't know, I just feel like God is a blessing in this place. Amen. Well, we're thankful for you being here, and and uh, we're just praying that uh, that you guys just stay right here and feel at home, and right. let the Lord help you here. It would be a blessing. You all are a blessing to us. Amen. Amen. Somebody else tonight? Amen. Yeah, they wore me out with that one song, didn't they? That Abraham, Father Abraham. I was tired just watching them. Uh, I can't believe. I don't think any of them fell, did they? I, I would have went down. Yeah, uh, they are. They're a blessing. A great privilege to be able to have them for a little bit on Wednesday night. Anybody else tonight? Well, we've got just a bit of time left, so we want to go ahead and, uh, if you will, take your Bibles and open them back up to the New Testament book, the little book of 1 John, and it's just really near the end of the New Testament. It's, uh, uh, it's just a few pages uh, back toward the front from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, and we've been studying our way through the entire book, and we, uh, we're down here to 1 John chapter 3, and I want to begin tonight in verse 11, just read for you right down through the remaining part of the chapter. And uh, we'll start a new thought and, uh, and, and keep moving ahead. And the title of this portion of God's Word is We've Passed from Death Unto Life. We have passed from death unto life. And we'll see that here in the Scripture. Uh, John was one of the original disciples. Uh, this is John, uh, often referred to as the Beloved. Uh, John was one of the three uh, disciples who seem to kind of be in the innermost circle of the disciples, along with uh, Peter and James and John. These three seem to kind of be a little closer to the Lord than the others, and I believe that was by their choice. I believe we can just walk as close to the Lord as we choose to. We set the distance. He, he wants us to abide in Him and be in Him and, and be with Him, and so we can do that. These three men are a picture of that. Because of that, the Lord allowed them to experience some things the others didn't, see some things the others didn't see, and, uh, and know Him in a little way uh, more, uh, more intimate and personal than the others did. John uh, was uh, the penman of the Gospel of John. Uh, the Lord gave him three short letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then John was the penman and gave us the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And uh, this little letter we find here has a really specific purpose. We saw it in our text verse for the whole book, 1 John 5, 13. 
These things, John writ, wrote, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. This little book is written to born-again believers, people who today would say, I have trusted the finished work of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is my Savior. And, and it's been written to give us security in our salvation. And that's what that's the kind of salvation God gives. That's real salvation, is one where there's security in it. And, uh, and the, he gives us biblical foundations for our security. And we're going to see another one here in 1 John chapter 3 in the text that we're going to read to you. But let's look at uh, verse 11, and you just follow along. I want to read down through the last part of this chapter. The Bible said, For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that... We should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. For whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. That's a great passage of Scripture. There's a lot of very clear truth there, and I'm thankful that we have it because it does give us assurance. It helps us to know that we have, as we read about in verse 14, passed from death unto life. Now, as we look at this, there's some things that we recognize. They were true in the life of John and in the time that he lived, and they're true today. One of these things is is that the world and everything that is in this world is dying. This world and everything in it is dying. It has a lifespan. This world has a lifespan. God created the heavens and the earth, and he created everything that's in them. He, he spoke and they were. But the Bible says that there is a day coming in which the heavens and the earth are going to pass away. They're going to melt with fervent heat, and everything that's in them is going to be consumed by a purifying fire. That day is set. Just as God spoke the world and everything in it into existence, there's going to be a day, and that day's already set in the mind and heart of God when this world and all that's in it is going to pass away. So this world is dying. Men are dying in this world. We're born into the world. We're born sinners. We just looked in 1 John chapter 3 and verses 1 through 11. And the, and the focus of that text was is that there are two families in this world. There are people who are the children of God and there are people who are the children of the devil. We are born into the world sinners. We're born sinners. Our sin separates us from God, 
And because we're separated from God, we are not by birth children of God. We are children of the devil. We must be born again in order to enter into the family of God, to become a child of God. And, and so when we're born into the world, we're dead in our trespasses and sins. We're dying as the world is dying. And, uh, and we see that, uh, that uh, uh, no matter how man tries to sustain this world, it will pass away. And there anything man can do about it. We can conserve and we can try to do this, that, and the other. And I'm not in any way opposed to doing the best we can. In fact, God said we ought to be good stewards, didn't he, of this world. But it doesn't matter what we try to do. Uh, this world is going to come to an end. And no matter what men try to do, there's nothing they can do to come alive apart from Jesus Christ. There's no life apart from him. And everything in the world and of the world is dying. Men are dying. True life in this world is to know that you're a born-again child of God. That's life. And that's what this world is all about. That's what our life in this world is all about. It's the opportunity to know life, to know God. And God gives us that opportunity. 1 John 3, verse 14, we find the verse that is our text verse for this passage, the title of this study, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. We have passed from death unto life. To know that you have passed from death unto life is the greatest knowledge in the world. There's nothing you can know in the world greater than that. There's a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of things I forgot, isn't there? You go back and just sit back in a class again. Go back to high school. <laughs> Set in a class and just think of all the things you forgot. Just let your daughter or maybe someday your grandchildren come up and say, hey, I need some help with this homework. And you're going to realize how much you've forgotten. Uh, we, there's much we do not know. There's much we could know. But there's nothing greater than you can know that you've been born again. There's no greater knowledge than that in the world. It, it alone gives peace where there is no peace any other way. It alone gives hope in the midst of the death of a world that's dying, in the midst of humanity that is dying, to know that you have eternal life, that you've been born again. That's the only thing that gives peace. That's the only thing that gives hope. That's the only place we can find and know life. And so here, here God gives us uh, some things to look for in the little book of 1 John that are evidences of the life of Jesus Christ within us. If we've been born again by grace through faith in the finished work of Christ, He lives in us. His Spirit lives in us. His life lives in us. He gives eternal life. He is eternal life. And, and there are evidences of his presence in our life. And, uh, and, and John gives us some of those things. Uh, he, he talks about those things that help us to know and be sure that we have passed from death unto life. And so one of these things, the first thing that we're going to look at here is the proof that we have passed. That's the first thing. And now we're not going to be able to get into that tonight because it's already time. But you can write that down and keep that note. Uh, the proof that we have passed. The proof that we have passed. What are some of the evidences that a man has truly passed from death unto life? What are they? Can we know? Is there evidences that a man has been born again? Uh, that, that by the grace of God, through faith in the finished work of Christ, that we have been born again, that we are saved, that we are a child of God, are there evidences? And if there is proof, then what would that proof be? Well, here is one of those great proofs that we find right here. And uh, I hope you'll notice it in verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life, Here's, here it is, because we love the brethren, because we love the brethren. 
He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. They've not, they've not experienced life. They've not, they've not been born again. They've not been infused with the life of Christ. They remain, they abide in a state of death. And so one of the things we're going to look at here is that there'll be a love for the brethren within our heart and life, a love that is not just simply human affection or human love, but it is a Christ-like love. It is a selfless love. It is a sacrificial love. It is a, it is a love that is an unconditional love. It is a love not based on how I am loved in return or if I am loved or shown love by someone else. It is that it is from within. It is from Christ. And there is a love for the brethren. And that's one of the evidences that we have passed from death unto life. And so we're going to look at it. We're going to look at what the Bible has to say for it. There's some interesting thoughts here and, and some things I want to mention just briefly as we look down through this passage because there's some things here that could be confusing to some people and could be confusing to us. Uh, some of them we find, verse 15, he, he speaks about hating our brethren and he talks about hating and murder as if they're the same. And then he makes a statement. He said, you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. And uh, that's, a, that's an interesting statement. What does he mean by that? And he goes on to talk about our charity, our compassion uh, of giving to those that have need. And uh, he talks uh, here uh, about uh, our, uh, uh, the Spirit of God uh, convicting our hearts of, of, of things when, uh, when we know that we're uh, in disobedience to the commandments of God. So there's some great truth here for our lives, but there's a great evidence, a great proof that we've been born again. And that is that there's a love within our hearts and lives uh, for the brethren. And so that's what we're going to look at. So be here uh, Wednesday night, and we're going to continue to look through this. And the first thought will be the proof the proof that we have passed from death unto life. And we're going to see it uh, in the scripture here together. But we're going to stop right there and we're going to, uh, we're going to pray together. And uh, we're going to look to the Lord. And we've got a lot happening and uh, our Bible college classes are continuing on and our students are doing a great job there and we're learning a lot together. And I appreciate uh, the students doing the work they're doing and the testimonies they're giving of how the classes are helping them and making a difference in their life, helping them to draw closer to the Lord. And uh, so pray for that tomorrow evening. And then Saturday, a big day. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a day that's a humbling day to me because of the opportunity we have to share the Word of God. And uh, you pray that God will give wisdom, discernment, and the power of the Spirit of God upon His Word. And, uh, and then be inviting people out for the meeting Sunday night. Uh, be here, be in your place, building with the Bible hour Sunday morning. Uh, all these things are great things. What opportunities we have uh, for God to do a work in our life. But we're thankful for, for, for you being here this evening. We're going to pray together and we're going to ask the Lord just to, to minister to us. Don't forget your Baptist breads are back here on the table I'll try to make that the last thing I say before I pray. That way you won't forget. But let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We ask you just to minister to every heart in life. Thank you again for the children, their families that were represented here. Lord, many of those little boys and girls, they don't have a mommy or a daddy in church tonight. And so, Lord, we pray for them that, Lord, moms and dads will lead the way. They'll set the example. They'll, they'll be faithful. They'll put a priority on spiritual things. And, uh, Lord, our children see and know and they follow us. And, uh, Lord, we want to lead them in the right way. And so bless them and help us to reach them. Uh, Lord, we pray you keep them all safe as they go home and our bus workers encourage them. Thank you again tonight, Lord, for our families. And, uh, Lord, we pray that we'll, uh, we'll be faithful in our prayer list. We'll be faithful to gather the resources for Easter and distribute them and be praying for the upcoming services and events and activities that, God, you will work. And this is, Lord, what we need in our families and in our hearts and lives. So bless tonight. Thank you for this time together. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.